Welcome to the Salvation Submarine. Today we are going to learn about a little animal that I'm sure you've seen before. It lives on the shore and scuttles around in tadpoles. It's the hermit crab. I don't know if you're excited, but I am. Okay, let's get on board. Welcome. I've been waiting for you to come so we can learn about the hermit crab. How's everybody feeling today? Ready for an adventure? <coughs> Captain, since you asked, I have a problem. Sometimes I feel tempted to do things that are wrong. I try my best to resist temptations, but it's hard. And I often end up doing things like lying or saying mean things to others. I think we all have those feelings at times. I know what you mean. Well, just keep your eyes open, and you may see an animal that might help you solve that problem. For now, I have a treasure text that might help you. I think we're near the chest right now. Let's go take a look at the porthole and see. Our treasure text today says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. How can that help me? Well, if you put on God's armor, you're stronger when tempted. I get it. God's armor gives us strength. But what's God's armor? Well, you'll see as we continue on today's adventure. For now, let's repeat our treasure text together. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. Well, you have a game show to get to. See you later. Hi, are we ready to have some fun? Bring yeah, it on! on. Okay, here's how we play the game. The letters are all scrambled. You have to get them in the right order. That sounds easy. It would be if you had lots of time to do it, but you don't. You have 60 seconds to get all the letters unscrambled. Are you ready? As ready as we'll ever be. Here you go. The clue is what God's armor protects us from. On your mark, get set. Go! Hmm. Dang, it's too easy. You are on a roll. Dang it. Keep on going. <laughs> Finish. Congratulations! You are the winner! One more game. For this one, try guessing the phrase by taking turns guessing the letters. Are there any E's? Yes, there happens to be four E's. Hmm, I'm gonna go with S. Mm-hmm, there are three S's. Let's try M. Unfortunately, that's incorrect. Hmm. Is there any bees? Yes, there happens to be two bees. Let's see, can I try an I? Yeah, there are four. You guys are on a roll. Hmm. Um, are there any J's? No, I'm sorry, there are no J's. I'm gonna try a G. No, there are no G's. Hmm, I'm gonna go with W's. Luckily, there is one W. Let's see, H. Yeah, there are three H's. Huh, are there any L's? 
Uh-huh, that's another lucky one. There's one L. Let's see, how about an A? I'm sorry, no A's <coughs> here. Hmm, are there any O's? Yeah, there are two O's. Let's see, I wanna try to guess, hmm. R? <laughs> yeah, that happens to be two. I guess I'll choose K. Unfortunately, no K's in this game. D? Yeah, there is one D. Huh. Is there any P's? Of course, there is one P. I'd like to guess the letters, I mean, I'd like to guess the phrase, the Bible is the sword of the spirit? Correct! You won the game! Yay. Mm -hmm. All passengers report to the control room immediately. Glad you're back. I just noticed something inside of the porthole you might find interesting. Our marine biologist will tell you about it. Thanks, Go Captain. The submarine is a neat kelp that are forced to seaweed. Many animals live on the kelp, including the hermit crabs you can see through the porthole. Wow, <clears throat> look at them all. They're so cute. I've seen those before. Some are large and others are small. That's right. Some are young and some old. Did you know that a hermit crab can live to be 32 years old? Wow, that's longer than dogs and cats. No way. What happens when they grow bigger? Do their shells grow with them? That's a very good question. They live in a shell until it's too big, I mean too small for their growing body. Then they leave the shell and find a bigger shell if it's better. They don't make their own shells. They just find shells that were, that were left behind by other sea animals and use those. What do they need a shell for? It looks bulky to carry around. Well, bulky as it might be, they need a shell for protection. If a predator tries to eat them, they have to get through the hard shell first. Shells aren't very tasty. What do they eat? They eat dead animals that fall to the ocean floor. Yuck! <coughs> Are there any more questions? Captain, you said that we may see an animal that would help me with my problem. You know, being tempted to do wrong. I don't see how a hermit crab helps me. Well, just like a hermit crab needs its shell to, shell to protect itself from the world, we need God shell, or armor, to protect ourselves from the world sometimes. Do you remember the story of Jesus fasting in the desert for 40 days? What does fasting mean? I think it means going without food for a while. Am I right? Exactly. Well, Jesus went for 40 days and nights with no food. Then the devil tempted him. He told Jesus to turn a rock into bread. Jesus refused and quoted the Bible verse that says, Man does not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil told him to jump off the top of the temple, saying God would send angels, angels to protect him. Jesus refused again and quoted the Bible, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Finally, the devil told him he could be ruler of the world if he bowed down and worshipped the devil. Again, Jesus refused, and again he quoted the Bible, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Sounds like Jesus, Jesus had a pretty strong shell to resist those temptations. You mean Jesus had a shell like a hermit crab? Not a hard shell like a crab, but he did have the armor of God that protected him. Now back to your question about at the beginning about what God's armor is. I think this story can help. Can you think of what armor Jesus used every time he was tempted? The Bible. That's right, he always quoted a Bible verse. In Ephesians 6, where our treasure text comes from, it says that the Word of God, or the Bible, is the sword of the Spirit. That means we can use the Bible to help us fight off temptations. I get it. The show of the crab protects it from danger all around it, just like the sword of the Spirit. The Bible helps us resi resist temptations of the world. I didn't know a hermit crab can teach me so much. Sounds like you learned an important lesson today. If there are no more questions, <clears throat> let's go to the boiler room. Welcome to the Boiler Room, passengers, where we always learn lessons that will empower our lives. <coughs> Today, we've been talking about the hermit crab and how amazing it is that it can find a shell to protect itself from dangers around it and even from predators. Well, it's easy to see how the shell can protect a hermit crab from danger, but it might not be so easy to see our Bible lesson for this episode, where we're learning about <coughs> how the Bible can protect us from all sorts of temptations that the devil might throw our way. 
So I thought we'd have an experiment that would teach us this very important lesson. For the experiment, all you need is a glass, lots of water, some index cards, and a big bowl to keep, make sure things stay dry. First, what you want to do is take your water and fill your glass all the way to the very top. All right, just like that. Now, passengers, what do you think might happen if I covered this with this index card and turned the glass upside down and moved my hand away? What do you think might happen? They're all, they're, the water's going to come out. Exactly. Right? Uh -huh. Well, or maybe not. But we'll have to try it out and see what happens. So first, I'm going to take my paper, cover the opening of the cup, slowly turn it upside down, and the count of three, I'll let go. One, two, three. Oh my god. Amazing! Oh the water stays inside the glass. Wow. Now, this might seem like an impossible task for us to do, but let me tell you why this happens. It's not actually the paper that's magical and keeping the water inside. It actually has to do with a force called air pressure. All around us, the air molecules are moving, bumping against each other, bumping against you and you, and you might think that it's, it's not that f powerful of a force because you can't feel the air pressure until you're moving really fast or until the wind's blowing really strong at you. But whether you can feel it or not, the air pressure is still a very strong force. Now, when I cover up the top of the glass with the index card and turn it upside down, there's actually no air inside that glass. But the air pressure on the outside of the glass pushes so strongly against that index card that it actually keeps it glued to the cup and so no water can actually come out. It kind of has a suction effect. So even though the paper isn't that magical, combined with the force of the air pressure, it actually keeps the water from coming out. Now how does this have to do with our Bible lesson for today? Well, let me explain to you. You see, you might not expect this paper to be able to hold back the force of the water from coming out of the cup. In the same way, you might not think that the Bible would be strong enough to keep you from temptations. However, the Bible has a very special force behind it as well, and that's God's power. When we have God's power combined with the Bible, we can fight off any temptation that the devil might throw our way. <clears throat> so remember our story about Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, used the Bible when he was trying to fight off temptations. So definitely, we need to use the Bible as well. And you know what? When we have the Bible and God's power on our side, we will definitely be able to fight off any temptation that the devil will throw our way. And that's what I call a powerful message. Thanks so much for joining us in the Boiler Room. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your ride on the Salvation Submarine. Well, that was exciting. Yeah, it was. It also helped me solve my problem. I know that I can ask God to help me protect me from temptations when temptations come. I can also use the, the sword of the Spirit to help me fight off temptations. And don't forget our treasure text. Let's say it all together. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. That means the next time you feel tempted to say something mean, you can always quote a Bible verse that can help you fight off that temptation. Perhaps you could say Psalm 34, 13. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Whatever temptation you have, always try to find a Bible verse to help you fight it off. That's right. And don't forget to pray for God to protect you with His armor. Why don't we pray right now and ask God to protect us with His full armor. Dear God, thank you for the lessons we've learned from the hermit crab and from Jesus' experiences with temptation. Please cover us with your full armor when temptations get to us. Help us also to remember to use the Bible verses to help protect us. Amen. Before you leave, we're going to sing a song that will help you remember our treasure text from today's adventure.
us on the Salvation Submarine. We'll hope you're ready with us again very soon. Bye! God bless!